Thanks to modern practice, even patients with worst case failed backs are returning to normal pain-free and active lives. Mr Taylor, how are results like this achieved? The short answer is logical treatment based on the identification of cause. The vast majority of back pain cases are attributable to a rudimentary mechanical problem. Fix the problem and patients recover. To function correctly, the spine must be supple and elastic like the spine of a healthy teenager. The supple elasticity of youth fades with time and age. As the spine stiffens, the joints at the lumbar sacral junction, the low back, and the thoracic cervical junction, the base of the neck, become increasingly overworked and overstressed. Pain, stretched ligaments, excessive wear and tear and disc prolapse are a natural consequence of the overwork and overstressing of these joints. The overwork and overstressing causes the ligaments to be stretched and the joint becomes progressively unstable. When the instability has reached the point where the spinal nerve can be momentarily pinched in the joint during activity, a back pain episode is triggered. A back pain episode is characterized by debilitating pain and an involuntary muscle contraction, which, when it's severe, we experience as muscle spasm. And this involuntary muscle contraction is the protective posture response. When you irritate a spinal nerve at the base of the neck, it produces this classic reaction, which produces a sideways curvature at the base of the neck, which opens the space around the affected nerve, protects against further irritation. So the pain subsides quite naturally. In the case of the low back, the protective response is termed sciatic scoliosis. Here again, involuntary muscle contraction produces a sideways curvature that increases the space around the affected nerve. So while the underlying disorder, the stiff spine, persists, Due to the action of the protective posture response, the pain subsides quite naturally. Over time, that protective posture response diminishes. As it does so, the patient becomes increasingly vulnerable to a fresh episode. By stage two, we begin to see the narrowing of the disc space and the beginning of that lipping or osteophyte formation around the edges of the vertebral bodies but this degree of joint degeneration is not uncommon. The patient gives up sport and, and activities which exacerbate the complaint and is generally becoming old before their time. It's during stage three that disc prolapse occurs. We can see what a disc is if we have a look at the model. This outer layer is made of concentric rings of tough fibers which grow into the vertebral body below and into the vertebral body above. It's not something that can slip about. In the center of this tough, fibrous jacket, there's a ball of jelly, which acts as a shock absorber between the vertebra in a healthy disc. With progressive joint degeneration, you can reach a point where that ball of jelly in the center can burst through the rotten fibers. This is the structural equivalent of dropping a rotten tomato on a hard floor. This is what is meant by a prolapsed or herniated disc. In most cases, it's symptomless. The patients don't know that anything's happened. If the patient's unlucky, then the mass presses on and irritates the spinal nerve. That produces the same debilitating pain and reaction as the pinch, but with a difference. In the case of the pinch, the protective post response can protect the nerve and everything settles down in a matter of days. If a disc prolapse is pressing on and irritating the nerve, it may take two or three months for healing processes to clean up the mass and relieve the pressure, even when supple elasticity has been restored. So you progress to stage four, back pain hell. Back pain hell starts when the protective posture response can no longer deliver relief. That makes perfect sense, but what is actually done? How are these results actually produced? The first thing we need to do is mobilise the joints of the spine. Working these joints backwards and forwards 
in counter rotation. And then move to the next one, like this. And as you work your way up and down, you restore mobility to all the joints. You can't actually work the joints of the spine with your fingers. The reason is very obvious. This is a scale model of a spine. The joints of the spine are much bigger and tougher than the joints of human fingers. So we need a tool for the job. The tool is very simple in principle. It contains four pneumatic pistons and these four rubber pads here. And the pistons are designed to work in opposing pairs. And the sizing and spacing of these pads has been arranged to cover a very wide variation of spacings on the spine so that we can use the tool to work these joints backwards and forwards in counter rotation. The pistons don't do the mobilization. They're used as air springs or cushions and replicate the natural spraying of thumbs or fingers. One pair is inflated and then the practitioner pushes down through the air spring working the joint in one direction of rotation and then the opposing pair is filled and then they push down working the joint in the opposite rotation. So by alternating the inflations we work backwards and forwards in counter rotation. A skilled practitioner can feel the response of each joint and will continuously adjust their touch to tease each joint back to mobility. With a combination of mobilization and reflex stimulation, we can recover both mobility and that elasticity, spring or rebound, which is characteristic of a young and healthy spine. Is that the entire procedure? We also need to recover the erector or anti-gravity muscles, but this can be done with a, very quickly with a simple exercise. In back pain sufferers, the erector or anti-gravity muscles are always shot. The reason is that when you hurt your back, you have to switch them off. You've got no choice in the matter. You only switch them off for a few days and they're lost. The principle is the same as when you break your arm and they put the plaster on as tight as they dare without impeding the circulation. After a couple of weeks, when you're desperate for a bath, you can slip your arm out of it. You've lost so much muscle. Well, when you switch these off, you lose them just as fast. However, they're quickly and easily recovered with a simple exercise. There's more to this story than just pain-free and active. Restore the supple elasticity of a much younger spine. They get their figure back. They get back on the balls of the feet and a spring in their stride. They feel, and in many respects are, years younger. In the final analysis, the common back problem is a natural consequence of with time and age. And the solution is a youth generation program. Is this program right for all back pain cases? No. There are three categories of disorder which can give rise to back pain. The first category is the common mechanical problem that we've been discussing. The second category is trauma, injuries of force and speed broken bones, torn tissue. The third category are medical disorders. Medical disorders are the province of the physician. There are medical disorders where the biomechanic can assist the physician in the management of the disorder by keeping the spine in as good a mechanical condition as possible for as long as possible. But there are no medical disorders which can be treated by mechanical means. However, the vast majority of back pain cases are attributable to the rudimentary mechanical problem that we've been discussing. And how long does the treatment take? The procedure is highly efficient. Supple elasticity can generally be restored within 5-40 minutes treatments, in one hour appointments, that include um, physical education and exercise. And it doesn't take long to recover the bostric muscles, and the erector muscles. However, the procedure is not a pain treatment and patients should not expect instant relief. Just as the procedure doesn't treat pain, it doesn't heal the patient either. The procedure halts the overwork and overstressing of the affected joints. The patient does the healing. Now, the ability of the body to heal itself and adapt is remarkable. 
but it doesn't happen in an instant. Does everyone with a common mechanical disorder recover? The vast majority recover, and most recover quickly. Does this mean we have the solution to the common back problem? In principle, yes. But prevention is better than cure. Ideally, supplasticity should be maintained or restored before structural damage occurs.